breaks, we break in. The managing director of Paragon Trust Company and tax and private client practitioner joins us to bring a common sense approach to money in a world of total insanity. Let's welcome Tony D'Angelo. You know, Tony, as I'm listening to the intro, it's been a while since we uh, gave you a, a plug. So uh, I'm going to give you a shameless plug, even though you didn't expect it. So if somebody wants to reach out to you, aside from your great Twitter handle, when they want to get your expertise in the world of uh, maybe finances and if you could help them and et cetera, uh, where would they go? Would they just email? Oh, my email's fine. Fortress Trust at AOL.com. Okay, Fortress Trust. You know, if Trust. I can't help you um, help someone do something, I do my best to get them to where they can be helped. Right. Well, you're, I mean, it, it's a business. So, I mean, if folks have, uh, you know, tax related issues and they want some, some excellent guidance, you're the guy uh, to go to. So, you're very kind. Thank you. All right. So, good morning. How are you? Good morning, Lee Elsie. Good morning to everyone. Proud to be among you. All right, so we're going to start again uh, with Semaphore, right? Yeah, and uh, I I want to make something you know really clear from the last time uh, we talked about a statement of work, uh, actually a subcontract for something known as whole genome sequencing. This is not COVID testing. Uh, this is what I like to call, and it's uh, starting to be called, semaphore no-bid backdoor deal number two. Will we see semaphore, semaphore no-bid backdoor deal number three? I, you know, tune in tomorrow. Right. But to be clear, whole genome sequencing is whole genome modeling. Now, people try to rationalize it, and they've come to me and say, well, it's only for purposes of COVID, but still, all the information is there. Um, there's no trail or track as to where it's going. We do know that it's going to, uh, to Munich, and uh, you can't rationalize what's happening here. It's pretty wretched. And uh, we looked at the actual subcontract last time out, um, and it's uh, you know started in September of last year. And no matter how government or state-run media tries to spin it, it's just another you know manufactured lie. Um, now, but you know something, I always try to be fair. I really, really, really do. And I thought last night, let's give Semaphore the benefit of the doubt. Regardless of how despicable this is and how they're not telling anybody about it, what if Semaphore were the world's best in whole genome sequencing? We want the best for our kids, right? Well, if you run down some of the you know scientific journals, and I was doing this last night, um, there's one here called uh, Disruptive Technologies. This was written at the end of last year. They list the companies who are at the top of this. The gold standard is, uh, and I see this in two or three places, a company known as Illumina, uh, followed by Human Longevity, Veritas, Nebula Genomics, 21 Genomics, Varianti, and GenCode. Um, Nebula, in their literature, now this is at the top of this year, January uh, of 2022. Now, Nebula is a competitor, but yet they're in the business. And there is a paper, Semaphore Review, the Best for Oncology and Women's Health. You can look it up. And in their paperwork, they say Semaphore does not even offer whole genome sequencing. And this is in January of 22. Now, anything I look at, I can't find where they're a player in this thing. So when you start to look at, okay, what's happening here? Your fail-safe is the SEC documents, because try and try as you might, you can't lie to the SEC. People do. The consequences are severe. When you run down the SEC documents, and I'm going from the proxy statement in May, um, and uh, they say that they got to the game of whole genome sequencing in their acquisition of Gene DX in January 22nd, or uh, January 22. They're a relative newbie. And if you go back to uh, August of 21, they're saying this is an aspiration of ours. So when you get to the merchandising and abuse of kids and all this other kind of stuff, it's like, Here's a contract. This contract goes out. They don't tell anybody about it. It's for whole genome sequencing. There are better players. The data on kids is going out, and uh, this, this, to me, is a horrific situation. Now, if you think that's not bad, they're still paying on this sucker. On June 2nd, um, there was a check uh, written to Semaphore 
for somewhere on this paper, I've got it uh, $640,000. So here we go again. On June you know, 2nd? This is just going on, and uh, it never seems to stop. It is a lot more than just, you know, no big COVID testing. And I, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm just amazed. I really am. So on June 2nd, we sent them another check? Yeah, we did. I thought that with this, this deal was over. Yeah. <laughs> so, so did I. What is going uh, so on, did, Tony? Uh, Mother Mary and all the ships at sea. How come no one is forcing him to comment on this? This is ridiculous now. This is beyond ridiculous. And not only that, but whatever your objective is, there are, there are well-established players in this thing. You know, I, I personally find it repulsive, but, you know, there are, you know, out of everybody else in the world, you know, you're 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 back with the home folks. So Semaphore, which was a no bid contract, which got you know greased the wheels for Ned's wife and and all her partners, made a fortune. And then when we needed them the most to actually produce stuff, they backed out of a deal. Yet they're still getting paid for that deal on June second, and they backed well, out of it months a ago. Different product. I mean, they backed out of the COVID testing, yeah. but they surreptitiously started something known as whole genome right, sequencing. Right, 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 right. So it's a whole different animal is what you're it's saying. It's a whole right. different thing. It is a derivative from the COVID test. Yeah. But, you know, it's my <laughs> Lord. I mean, it's um, it, it would be funny if it weren't so sick and sad and twisted. Wow. And it just goes on. Well, you know? yeah. Listen, I, I really hope people, I hope the politicos who are listening to us every, you know, I know they listen. I hope they try to do something with this because it's, it just seems like it's outlandish. And it's, uh, you know, for lack of a better term, it's like flip, flipping the middle finger to the entire state of Connecticut and saying, I'll do whatever I want, whenever well, I want. Well, and when you give this guy credibility, I mean, really, it's, uh, it, it, it's, it's a shame. I mean, there is a part of public service, which is, you know, due diligence and advocacy. And uh, we're, uh, we're like F minus in that in this right. state. It's terrible. Tony D'Angelo is with us. He's with us each and every Tuesday. We are very, very lucky to have him. And as I was saying earlier this morning, he has blown up on uh, Twitter. And that's a good thing, as the kids would say. You can follow him on Twitter, <laughs> Tony D'Angelo7, where uh, he posts interesting stuff just about every single day. And if you follow him, you'll uh, you'll be able to see all that stuff. All right. So, you know, move from that to the governor's yeah, jingle. We're going to hit new lows. And- uh, it's uh, anytime you think you've seen something bad, something comes along that's that's worse, or, or so it seems. And and you know, I walk away and I say, well, that was good. What are we going to do next week? And you never seem to be at a loss of things. But uh, two days ago, there was a sickening tweet uh, that our governor was a part of that uh, set the backdrop for an incoherent video as the governor, as the lodestar for this state, the person who is supposed to be. We're a state moving forward, and we're a state doing great things. In this little, like, one-minute sickening video, he touts legal pot, Internet gambling is pizza as the reasons why you should come here. Now, if you haven't seen this, Lee Elsie, you need to watch it. What I'll do is I'll throw it up later, you know, on the board. But uh, where other states are talking about development and technology and great things, our leader's talking about marijuana and, uh, you know, of course, his family's in in the – marijuana industry through Dama Financial and pizza and internet gambling. Um, I don't know if this is just Marxist or stupid. I, I, I really don't know. But I thought of something um, when I was uh, driving around the other day. Remember Ross Perot? I do. Ross Perot ran for president twice, and he was uh, uh, Ross was quite a guy. And uh, he had a great saying, and he said, there is a great difference in a society making computer chips as opposed to potato chips, because people will aspire to the highest good. Now, where are we on that? (laughs) We're not even at potato chips at that point. And other than Bob Stefanowski, to his credit, um, I haven't seen one GOP member screaming about this and what a terrible thing it is. This video, when you watch it, um, it's like it's kind of telling kids that, hey, it's okay to, you know, get high in marijuana. Shame on anybody who doesn't do that. Now, this is where you're a Don Imus fan. I, I know that. I, I was him. never a great Don Imus fan, except in the very early days with WNBC when he was doing Top 40 stuff. Right. And he was a very good Top 40 DJ, by the way. I mean, you got to be old enough to remember that. But 
We have a statute. You know, this is the thing I was saying to a young fellow last night. We have great laws on the books in the state, except people don't read them. There's a general statute, 3-1A, uh, where the governor can be removed for uh, reasons of mental incapacity. Now, when you look at this video, you're going to say, is this guy sane or is he crazy? <laughs> and, I mean, for all the stuff about, you know, we're wonderful, we're bipartisan, we do things together and all stuff. I thought of Don Imus would always have this saying, and he'd say, you can't be part pregnant. Yep. <laughs> you know, you got to be here or you got to be there. So, yeah. I mean, now I think it's to the point where you got to decide. I mean, is this guy sane doing this? Because if you don't do anything, you're saying he was sane when he did it. It is sickening. I'm sorry. That's not opinion. That, that I think, is just the way it is. Yeah, I haven't seen that commercial, so I'll look for it when you post it up there. I haven't seen it yet. But I, I, listen, I said this a long time ago about how this state somehow has lost its way. And, you know, I'm not trying to get up on the righteous pulpit. I, you know, I no, actually, me neither. I thought that, you know, putting pro gambling in here was, was probably a smart thing eventually. But to tout it as, you know, why you want to come here. And I also thought that the, the casino should be the only ones that handle it. So that's something completely different. But anyway, well, uh, sure. we, we, I think we've gone down, we certainly have gone down the road to ruin. Tony, I don't think there's any question about that. I mean, what's next? I mentioned it and jokingly that prostitution is next a couple of years ago on television, and and who knows? Maybe it is next. It's it's it, it, we keep hitting new lows every single day, and I mean, there, there's no. There's no fiscal accountability. The guy's doing no big contracts out the back door. And, like, I, I would think that if you're running against this, I mean, you know, you're sitting there campaigning politically and saying, when is my ship coming in? Well, here it is, the Queen Mary. What are you doing about it? That's a good point. It's all, listen, it's, it's, a, good, it's a good point. We've lost our way. All right, talk to me about Ned Coin. Well, okay. <laughs> if you like peanut butter, you'll love Skippy. We had a development last week that was kind of interesting. It's just uh, kind of more indicative to this thing, and I know we just kind of shake our heads at this, but uh, this actually got the attention of the good folks down in Pennsylvania who were dealing uh, with the Oak Investments. And uh, one of the equities we've talked about in the past of which Oak H HCFT is involved in is something called Cerebral. It's a startup corporation dealing with men mental telehealth. Uh, a person with mental difficulty, instead of actually showing up in a doctor's office, can deal with a doctor or a nurse practitioner and be counseled uh, and receive prescription medicines and therapy. Um, recently, Cere Cerebral received a grand jury subpoena from the Eastern District of New York. The charge is potential oversubscriptions of um, drugs like Adderall and Xanax, and it, uh, there are videos of nurse practitioners saying, well, they want us to keep pushing this stuff, and they rush us through the appointments, and, you know, this, this is trouble. Well, the Fed started to get a little bit interested in it, and uh, now you have the CEO of Cerebral resigning, and you have what was really a terrible situation. If ever you've dealt with somebody in, in mental trouble, for lack of a better term, or, you know, uh, needing, uh, you know, a, a, I'm just going to say a, a patient with, with mental difficulties. The worst thing you can do for this person, I've had clients like this, I've had family members like this, is somehow disturb their chain of medication. It's like, we can't get you your medication. Watch what happens. It is not fun whatsoever. So Walmart and CVS have stopped filling prescriptions. It's like, well, we ain't going to get involved with this mess. So you think about the damage this is causing. And if you run and you run with that a little bit. Um, it's they're in damage control at this point. They really don't know. You know, I, I mean, they're, they're trying to save the ship. It doesn't look good. Now, how do our heroes figure in this mess? You know, Bonnie and Clyde. If you go to Crunchbase. Um, Oak HCFT is still heavily invested, and they're a in PitchBook. Um, their you know their money is in this thing, whether they want to tell you or not. But Anne Lamont in the Ned tradition wants you to forget this ever happened, and. You look at the website now, Cerebral was pulled from the Oak HCFT website when all the trouble started. It never happened. And 
Um, there is a tweet that she sent out in October. Simone Biles, the gymnast, was uh, the poster person for Cerebral, right. and she was touting Cerebral and all this other kind of stuff. The, the, the tweet is down. You know, it's just uh, – um, we, we ain't involved with this, folks. Um, and we might say, you know, you and I might say, oh, you know, so what? It's D'Angelo talking about another Ned deal gone wrong. But this one, unfortunately, has some severe consequences. Um in Pennsylvania, uh, because this got the attention of the folks down at Pizzers, uh, Pizzers made a $35 million investment in uh, this particular equity in 2020. And Zeke Emanuel, the uh, venture investor of Oak HCFT, was confronted about this. It's like, well, you know, there's um, – over prescriptions of Adderall and Xanax, they're all abused by college students. And, and Zeke became very imperious. And he said, well, what are you blaming this for? All my doctor colleagues do this. You know, hmm. like, <laughs> this, this. And you can find that interview on Politico. And, and you know, it's just like, uh, OK. And the other thing, so this is a large investment that – these teachers in Pennsylvania who are relying on for the retirement, I don't think it's going to be there. The other thing is our own Connecticut retirement plan through Hamilton Lane. There's $92 million in Oak Three Caymans. And this is, you know, I mean, we don't talk about it. Nobody mentions it. The unions are quiet about it. And it's like, I think this is a terrible thing, you know, because it's like how many other dog investments are there out there, like in our state? And if these things really collapse, guess who's paying? Lee Elsie, yeah, Tony absolutely. D'Angelo. Yeah. I mean, it's that's one thing. The other thing, and this is a bigger issue, um, when you actually look at it, you know, there, there was a saying uh, years ago in baseball, the worst possible person you can have on a baseball team was somebody that stole from another player. That was like, regardless, you know, we're, we're getting rid of you. We're blackballing you from baseball. Anybody who's ever worked, the worst thing that anybody could ever be involved with or any kind of relationship is somebody that buries things and tries to keep them from views. And this, this is the Lamont M.O. They don't owe up to things. This is the whole thing, Leo. Right. Anybody can make an error in judgment. God knows I've made them, you know. But the thing is, I've made them. I'm sorry. What could I do to make this right? No, they just sweep it under the rug. And you look at this his, this history of this litany, the Cayman Islands, the COVID testing, you know, the, the tests are on the runway. McKinsey's buried in advanced Connecticut, 4CT. We're going to get to that in a little bit. And now we've got this. This is – can you trust these people to do anything? I mean – Everything is a cover-up. It's a lie. It's a backdoor deal. It's a contract you don't hear about. And, uh, you know, let's do pot and pizza and gamble, and it's all going to be okay. Tony, a great job again today. And I hate to say it. It's Yes, you're, you're focusing in on Lamont, but it, this is all the way from the top down, too. Biden's the same exact way. So uh, again, Well, you see, that that's an interesting point because – Take Biden, and, and I'm the least to defend this guy, but what if Biden came out, uh, let alone Trump, but what if Biden came out with a thing of, you know, well, we have legal pot in the United States and isn't everything great? I mean, can you imagine the outcry? But like Ned, it's like, yeah, you know, this this is, this is a wonderful thing. Oh, yeah. I'm, I mean, honestly, it's it, 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 it shocks my old bones. But they never, neither neither of the two ever admit any fault, any mistakes. None it's whatsoever. never their fault. It's always somebody else's fault. Things are rosy. Things are great. It's, uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, I, and I guess some people buy it, Tony, because they keep getting elected, right? It, <laughs> it, it, it's an amazing thing. I, I, I can't really understand it. I mean, when you have, you know, I, I'm always an advocate for children, and, and I am an advocate for children not being a parent. But, you know, I mean, to me, that is a precious time in a person's life. When you see an assault where it's inferring that it's okay for kids to do marijuana, and then you see their genetic data being abused, right. and then you see parents come to me, and this is the amazing thing. Uh, I don't know why they come to me. I think, you know, my lot in life is people come to me and, you know, I, I usually find a way to help them. But they say, you know, who's advocating? I don't see any political party advocating for the welfare of my child. 
I see other things. I see causes. I see this. I see that. But who protects these children, you know, other than, you know, uh, like, you know, to vaccinate, to, to vaccinate or not to vaccinate, to mask or to not to mask, or the state saying, well, you know, we know more about your kids than you do. And it's like this is a gaping flaw in our society. And it, it's terrible, it's- like we were talking about yesterday with, you know, MLB and uh, the whole thing of Detroit Tigers. And uh, we're going to have, right. you know, transgender uh, su- support uh, for surgery at the ballpark. I mean, it's like <laughs> that, that's another subject for another show. Oh, so I was, that's exactly what I was just going to add to this conversation at the end here is that I was going to say it, it's exactly the opposite of protecting the kids. We've gotten to the point now where we're, we're celebrate, you know, you're going to celebrate somebody being either m- mutilated by surgery or altered as far as what drugs they take when they're they're kids, they're children, and somehow that is heroic. Doing something like that is heroic. Uh, we again, Tony. I go back to what I said earlier. We've lost our way. In particular, we've lost our way with the guiding of our kids. It's insane. And, it's insane. And, and and you know, I mean, and uh, believe me, I like you don't want to preach, but. And, and, and people, there's an old saying in the church, sin is sin no matter who it's in, but the worst possible sin, biblically, is the abuse of a child. Right. This, 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 this will not play well. This will not play well. Tony, thank you as always. Great stuff. Follow Tony on Twitter. It is a great follow. Tony D'Angelo 7. I'll talk to you again next week, pal. Thank you, pal. All Thanks, right, everybody. Buddy. You have a good one. We'll be right back. Bruce Flax will be next. Stick around. You're listening to 94.9 News Now and Stimulating Talk. <laughs> 